Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtz Gazat's videos. Specifically, there are thousands of alien empires in the Milky Way. How do they know they're all imperial? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. What if there are thousands of alien empires in the Milky Way each spanning a few to maybe tens of star systems, chatting, trading, sometimes shooting or ignoring each other politely. And if if that's the case, we're probably already marked in one of their territories, kind of like how there's an ant hill that claims to be a civilization on one of our lawns that we just don't really bear much notice to because we're not relevant. So, why is nobody visiting us? While the Milky Way is ancient and gigantic, even traveling at 10% the speed of light, any civilization could take over the whole galaxy within a million years. But we haven't seen anybody yet. So it seems... I guess a million years isn't that long considering how old the Milky Way is, considering it's multiple billions of years that somebody might have figured it out by now. We're alone in the Milky Way. But this idea is built on a lot of assumptions. Hmm. Usually, when scientists speculate where all the alien civilizations are, they assume technology will progress to a point where colonizing all of space becomes kind of easy. But what if we're thinking about this the wrong way? Uh -oh. What if the universe is full of life, but no matter how technologically advanced you are, space is never easy? What if alien... I mean, easy is relative, but it could just take longer than we thought. ...slowly crawl through space, expanding like humans did over the ocean. Let's look at the only data point we have, ourselves. I mean, that's slow, but not that slow, considering it just took a few centuries when you got millions of years to work with. That would actually be an argument in favor of space being relatively straightforward. The available real estate in the galaxy. <laughs> Oceania is a region with tens of thousands of islands scattered across millions of square kilometers separated by an unforgiving deadly sea. Kind of like a galaxy. Some 5,000 years analogy. ago, the first people set out to colonize Oceania. Especially the Polynesians achieved mind-blowing feats. Without any modern technology, they set out into the vast nothingness, hoping to find a new island to claim, or, like, die, far from home. But most of the Pacific Islands are merely a few wet rocks or corals, maybe some palm trees, and if you're lucky, birds making a pit stop. Others with more vegetation are often hostile, lacking the resources to really sustain a lot of people, and remain uninhabited even today. Okay, I can see the parallels between a lot of planets being barren worlds that can't support life. All right, I'm with you. And then there are the good islands. The Polynesians colonized them, spreading their culture and society to dozens of remote islands of all sizes. Some united in kingdoms spanning many islands, others were independent, My many home dog. to competing and belligerent tribes. And although thousands of kilometers apart, even the most remote islands were connected with at least some trade and exchange. A microcosm of humanity, a but it Relative didn't always work places. out. The extremely isolated Pitcairn Islands were settled for hundreds of years and relied on trade with each other and bigger islands hundreds of kilometers away. And then the local population vanished. We don't know yeah. why. Maybe because the island... Long supply lines are a pain did the human thing and ravaged the natural resources until they became unsustainable. Maybe the decline on distant, bigger islands severed important connections. We only know their culture declined and they left or died out. What if space is an ocean to us? A hostile place that's hard to conquer. Would alien civilizations spread like the Polynesians? The universe is kind of a horrible place. <laughs> Wow, that's negative. The Milky Way has around 200 billion star systems, and it seems that almost all of them have planets. Estimates vary, but there may be some 300 million to tens of billions of rocky Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around a star where water can be liquid. Amazing. Except that most of them are terrible. Hells of lava, dead frozen worlds, bare rocks sterile from radiation, blanked by toxic atmospheres. On the note of exoplanets being sterilized by radiation, I mean, that can come from a few factors. 
one being proximity to their sun. Not only is ultraviolet radiation stronger, but also x-ray radiation, solar winds. If they don't have a strong magnetic field, they can also lose their atmosphere and possibly be sterilized. Losing your atmosphere is even worse. And also even the type of star, like the sun's relatively calm, but if it was one that had a whole bunch of crazy super flares and other adverse stellar activity, that could really inhibit the formation of intelligent life or even the ability of intelligent life to form a settlement on those kind of planets. That is one thing we do take for granted. It's easy to forget, but Venus and Mars are Earth-like too. Yep. Mars is the next human frontier and fairly exciting. But Mars dust is poison and deadly radiation and low gravity will make you sick. The radi again, the radiation problem, lack of, lack of magnetic field, so most Martian colonies would be better off being built underground, so you wouldn't even be able to see the red surface. And any ventures up to the surface would have to be heavily controlled, just like entering any radiological controlled area. It would be monitored, kind of like going into the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Except this is way, way more hazardous than the Chernobyl exclusion zone was even during, even right after the accident. Mars is the worst. Except Venus is even worse, crushing you to death, burning and dissolving you in acid. I was gonna say, Venus, you would not last long on the surface. The pressure is just way too high. Um, you'd be better off making like, uh, living on like an airship or maybe in a cloud city type settlement that you'd see in Star Wars in the upper atmosphere, but that has its, has its own set of challenges. If humanity was really motivated and had the resources and energy, both could be terraformed within maybe a thousand years. We showed how in other videos. <laughs> but the thing is, Which we already that have a planet a that's pretty great, so... I was saying that's not really that long on a, uh, on a planetary scale when you're dealing with hundreds of millions or billions a year to get the planet to do what you want it to do. Currently, humanity's motivation is not very strong. Now, let's think about this in terms of galactic expansion. <laughs> That's a great quote to be taken outside of context. Motivation not very strong. If the Milky Way is like a vast ocean full of islands, most are planets like Mars and what Venus, barren rocks or corals oh, where no, nothing grows and the elements kill you. Imagine boarding a generation ship to travel for 100 years or more, only to arrive at a new star and then you get a Mars. Or worse, a Venus. What a letdown. I was gonna say you arrive on a generation's ship and then to find out that it had already been colonized by a fast by a ship that was faster than you. I think there's a few there's a few sci-fi novels about that sort of thing. Terraforming them is such an intense investment in terms of resources to make it worth spending the time to travel to the stars for bad planets. Maybe the simple reason we don't see galaxy spanning civilizations is that the economics just don't add up for almost all of the star systems out there. Still but wait, expensive. you might say it's actually easy. A high-tech race with unlimited resources could automate this process, sending thinking machines that report back every few thousand years with new planets ready for fresh settlers or automated ships with embryos. Now that's one way to do it, just to send drones out there rather than having to send and not sending people out there until everything's pretty much ready. Probably one of the reasons why we haven't sent anyone to the Martian surface yet, because we're just might be better off just building a uh, building a habitat on Mars remotely with drones, and then sending people there after it's all more or less built. But if it were that easy, someone would have done it by now. So either we are really alone, or it's not easy. Or we're just the first civilization that's going to do this. I mean, we're, we're going to be the ancient precursor civilization billions of years from now. Interesting. Thinking about alien civilizations, you need to make loads of assumptions. And for this video, we're assuming that space is hard even for high-tech civilizations that have broken free from the limitations we have today. Now, things are getting exciting. Need to get a little bit more specific on those limitations, because if you break so many of them, then, well, nothing's going to be easy, or nothing's going to be hard. It's kind of like turning all the cheat codes on. So what if alien civilizations actually ignore the bad islands and just pick the very best? Stringing together island empires like the Polynesians. Thousands of galactic empires. 
every star like moves in its own orbit through the galaxy, and most stellar neighborhoods are only temporary. At any given time, in some regions there will be more good islands than in others, while simply because of bad luck, other regions will be pretty isolated. Earth might currently be in one of these backwaters, surrounded by really bad islands for dozens of light years in all directions. We may be Pitcairn Island, so isolated that nobody knows we're here or cares to establish a colony so remote. But elsewhere in the Milky Way, good islands may be more common. I'm still wondering if we're maybe just insignificant enough and we're already claimed in some interstellar empire's territory, but they just don't really notice. Kind of like how in a lot of terrestrial empires on Earth, you see various isolated tribes are within an empire's borders. There, it would be relatively easy for a high-tech civilization to jump from one good star system to the next, creating connected empires. Sure. Strings of worlds, with all the adventure and challenges of expansion, even to really good planets. Do alien they need mushrooms? to animate dead worlds with oceans? How do they cope with alien microorganisms or strange ecosystems? Do they need to burn it all down and create a mirror of their home world, or do they adapt? How many centuries? This is a really cool animation depicting this, as always, from these guys. Even if I don't completely agree with them. Do they need to make a planet truly their home? Empires expanding in regions full of good islands would probably meet each other. Maybe they trade, maybe they fight, maybe they have coffee and chat about the meaning of it all. <laughs> and just like some of the Polynesian islands, it's likely that many of these planets would be abandoned or for the empires to break apart for a number of reasons. Just like any other First empire. of all, most great neighborhoods would dissolve over time and connected islands would become remote. Then it just may be the nature of civilization to become unsustainable or self-destructive. Humanity is extreme. Love self-destructive. You gotta have this green ooze everywhere. Only <laughs> young, and we've already flirted with extinction. The yes, gotta always bring up extinction involving uh, nuclear weapons, even though we we don't have nearly enough to do that. Even if you take into the effects of nuclear winter. If you want to hear me talk more about that? I'll uh, pin a comment below with a link to that video. There are numerous existential risks, cultural, technological, and environmental, that any civilization has to deal with. And smaller colonies on new planets would likely be less resilient than their home worlds and in bigger danger of dying out. That's true, because we got so many generations of adaptability to our own planet, um, just with all the natural evolution more or less being on our side, because we were able to adapt and this new planet that we don't know as well yeah i can see that struggling just like any um any frontier colony of any terrestrial empire expanding has met with their own level of hardship whenever this happens this would leave a good island free again for others to rediscover and colonize it's free real estate also i was wondering how long it was going to take them to make that meme space is just a different ballpark the enormous distances between stars make it hard to maintain a consistent civilization. Just think about how many cultures we have on Earth alone. Unless they figure out that whole faster than light travel thing. <laughs> Imagine if sending a message between continents took decades to arrive. Would colonies care what the home world- I'm gonna say a century ago, it, it kinda did, or the, or the message just wouldn't get there. Wants from them, if it can neither help nor really enforce its will on them. This also would make interstellar war, except the genocidal kind, completely uneconomic. Would you go to war with someone because their great-grandfather killed yours? And these distances... Uh, you'd, you'd be surprised with how many people in civilizations think that way. It's not like anyone could easily sneak up on each other anyway. And on a much more fundamental level, if island empires don't exchange relevant amounts of genetic information, if there are no hookups between worlds, sooner or later, these populations will develop in different directions and eventually become different species. That's kind of what I figured, especially with the example of them having frozen embryos, DNA banks on the generation shifts. It's possible you're going to have what looks like aliens, but basically just be humans or whatever the initial species was that just evolved down a different path. We may even see that happen on Earth at some point with uh, 
advances in bioengineering. Could be cool. Making it less likely that they'll want to be under common rule. Yeah. So the idea of enormously big connected amp Again, I know they're using a lot of parallels to terrestrial empires because we've We've seen that with um, expansion into the Western Hemisphere from European colonies, and again, they use the Polynesian example as well. Empires may just not be feasible if the galaxy is an ocean where good islands are few and far between. But this also means that new civilizations may pop up constantly, spread and partially or completely die out, even if just by splitting into different factions. Hmm. Islands may be recolonized yep. and abandoned over and over. What would this mean for us? We might think we're alone only because we're on an isolated island right now. We could be one of those life-seeded planets from a generation ship or something. And watch that in a few more other episodes of Ancient Aliens on the History Channel, and I'm sure you've <laughs> you go down that rabbit hole pretty quick. I don't actually believe that, though. But there could be thousands of worlds full of diverse civilizations elsewhere that we would eventually drift closer to. Does this make the Milky Way more scary or less scary? Is it a good thing that we'd have time to get our act together before we face anyone else? Or is it a great yeah, tragedy that we might not have the chance to meet our neighbors beyond for a long, long time? Well, we don't know, but it is something for you to ponder tonight when you look up at the sky again. Hopefully, humanity is still at the beginning and we're learning a tiny bit more about the universe every day. Maybe by the time we meet the aliens, we'll finally have sustainable commercial nuclear fusion power plants. Maybe. You keep adding up enough 20 years away, you'll eventually get there, right? One day, we might spot a good island. And if we're lucky, many more close by. Interesting idea, and I understand that it's rife with a bunch of assumptions of having interstellar travel from foreign alien civilizations be applicable using the same analogy that we did for terrestrial empires but it's also possible they're just so alien that they've already contacted us but just incapable of communicating with them so they just kind of watch us and just leave us there who really knows maybe we'll find out at some point maybe they can help us figure out maybe they'll show us something even better than nuclear power as an energy source or just an upgraded version of it. Food for thought. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.